Hello everyone, this is Fantastic Worlds, welcome you back to Lovecraft Country and Cultist Simulator Tips and Tricks. Yes, we've gone to this point, you should have already seen part one, which if I remember, I'll put the link up there, in which we get to the first stable point in the game, in which you have maxed out your character in everything you can short of magic. See, before you touch magic, which is going to cause this game's difficulty to spike, you should be able to get to this point. Now, as you can see, we currently have a job at position at Glover and Glover under a boss that we hate. We've got a mysterious bequest given to us from an, some, an old man who um, saw something in us just before he died. And I have taken the time to max, not quite max out, both the health, the steely physique, um, all, sorry, health, passion, and reason to level three, which is what's on, what maximum possible if you are in fact relying on mundane resources. You'll notice I can upgrade it again, but it wants something more. Yet the right lore. Use the invisible arts to come to a reach an even higher summit. I must choose between strength and grace, uh, whatever that means. In any case, what we're going to have to do now is the section two, which I call hitting the books. See, we haven't even cracked into the bequest. So this is the time that we take the request and study it. Now, I have to decide what approach I'm going to take. If I take a passionate approach to the study of the arcane arts, I will engage in one path known as forge. If I take a reasonable one, I'll be taking another path, which is called lantern, which is the power of a thought by forge is the power of creation. Now I've done lantern, and I've done that a couple other ones as well, but I have not done Forge, which means if I examine the quest employing passion, I'll read, theorize, pace, sketch, clutch at my hair and wonder, rise in elation, and collapse in despair. Well, sounds like my usual Tuesday night, but hey. Anyways, so in the meantime, we do have a job to keep up. And the way I've been doing it, you'll notice that's at 59.9, I'm currently paused, is I have been alternating doing unskilled labor and working the clerk. Now, the thing is, if you work just at the clerk, usually, but not always, you'll make slightly more money than you do with the labor. But the la you can do both, as the labor will only require, at this level, I believe 50 seconds, possibly 45. I'll remember, I don't remember exactly. It'll tell me the moment I start it. But it also gives you, gives you one fund instead of two for the uh, job, but it also gives you one vitality. Now, vitality is really important because it will prevent you from getting when you get sick you can use it to cancel that if you have an injury you can use it to cancel that and if in the future you require what a heart influence card which is essentially a type of energy for magical purposes you've got one kicking around you can even combine two of them to create a lesson learned and get a two vitality now probably in section three is we're really going to get into influences when we deal with the actual magical uh, part of the game but for right now we're dealing with how you learn how to use magic now right now get back to work because you know this is a capitalist system whether it was 2020 or 1927 which is what the game is roughly about last desperate gasps of the british empire during the victorian reign and we'll continue we've got nothing to dream on right now but as we study these it will unlock what essentially are the other the other verbs, the other, what I like to say, cylinders you can fire on. We've been firing on three out of five cylinders, and yet with that, we've only we've managed to get ourselves maxed out as a character. Again, piling up the random influences. Next will come restlessness. We'll deal with that. Okay. And boom. This is when things start happening. And I've decided I'm going to, in this one, kind of um, expand this so you can read along with me. I realize that given the resolution, you might not be able to see it, so we're going to make this a little closer. Examine my request employing passion. My correspondent describes my dreams exactly. They use names that are instantly familiar. The house, the woods, the hours, the glory. These are the four major principles, four of the major arcane principles you will learn more about. Because the great thing about this is books don't just give you lore, rights, or other form of... Uh, positive uh, other forms of um, cards they also will tell you the story of how this world came to be this is not 1927 britain this is a place that looks like it that has had something rather disastrous happen in its background something lovecraftian horror wise but 
Everybody, everybody doesn't notice because most mundanes are simply keep their nose to the ground and probably wouldn't notice the apocalypse is actually happening around them. But anyways, I have a sense of power here that generals and kings would envy. A new desire burns within me. That's important. There's a note here, direction to a bookshop that does not quite advertise its wares. Morelands. Cryptic directions to an obscure address of a certain Moreland, a dealer in rare sort of books. That's going to become our second home. Notes and a possible collaborator. My correspondent had recorded his observations of me. He believed I had potential. He recorded his observations of someone else, too. With time and study, perhaps I can find that person. And we will get to that part, too. Probably in part three. Temptation. Now, this is the... Give me the word. It has occurred to me that I hold the key to power. This card will allow you to power victory if you upgrade it far enough. Dreaming about it might advance or change it. We'll get to that later. But right now, this is that thrumming in our bones, that desire to um to know the truth to be seized that this this insane occult need that drives lovecraftian protagonists and real life occultists too into ins going doing insane things and probably things our neighbors would complain about but last one is the smith secret now this is your first piece of lore in five continents smiths have known the newest whispered the name to iron murderers have known to whisper these words too and adepts of course these words are spoken in the rituals to inspire an unmerciful change it requires knowledge. This is a puzzle with Mrs. P's. I might find those pieces in odd corners of scholarship. To upgrade or subvert this fragment, you'll need erudition or an HQ with a library. Deal with that later. Aspect Forge. Fire, I once read, is the winter that warms and the spring that consumes. This principle of forge transforms and destroys. This is the first occult principle we will be dealing with. Forge, which is the fires of creation and destruction. And just as an aside, the first recorded, well, in the Western tradition, I guess, magicians in our ancient past were smiths the ones who could whisper to steel and get and well iron in those days maybe even bronze um and and give and impart it with the, their desires and of course it's lore we'll be going through a lot of that but at the moment let's collect it all get to work now smith's secret i usually put lore up here and it will we'll begin to be create um columns of it as time goes on the temptation i'll put over here this is going to be your bane by the way because this is literally a thing that will drive you mad if you do not complete it, it will kill you eventually until you can treat the symptoms, but you have to either win the game, die, or completely submerge your talent or go to jail or, or go mad. You have no other options at this point. This, this The desire will drag you to one end or another, and you'll find that in the game quite well. Now, these are important as well. Moreland's, the bookstore, and the possible collaborator. What we want to do first, by the way, we have two ways to go here. You can either concentrate on gathering people, or you can concentrate on gathering lore. I always go with the lore first, because people will get you into trouble faster. Once you start talking to other people about arcane method, uh, stuff, people, authorities will start to notice. We want to delay that as much as possible. So, find Moreland's shop. The directions to Moreland's shop are cryptic. When one deals in the kinds of books my correspondent studied, one must be circumspect. In other words, forbidden top, forbidden, uh, get back in there. Forbidden, books of forbidden lore. Ugh, God, how long does it take me to say something like that? For the moment, we'll leave this over here. And let's see. So not really anything else we can do at this point. So notice that now the exotic cratings ones takes the cower card. Originally, it was just an empty concept that was driving us mad. Now we actually know what we mad. The forge of day days waits in my dreams. If I learn the forge's lore, I dream of this temptation. I can advance my purpose. The need gnaws at me. And we have restlessness. If you require, remember, restlessness will decay into a uh, into a uh, dread, which is, of course, another problem we have to deal with. But let's get back to a. Uh, what um what we need to do all right so per usual vitality put the health back into the air go to your set go to your first job after your second job oh god this feels so late capitalism um and under mr alden's stern leadership yeah he we haven't got him to retire yet usually takes about 50 60 times to round the wheel before he'll do that and it's a little annoying but of course we are not at the position where we can do anything about it either Later, we can. There is a way to get rid of him. A couple of ways to get rid of him. Of course, you can hire someone to kill him, and you can actually have one of your followers seduce him and take compromising photographs. 
It's actually lovely. I've never actually done that second option, but I kind of want to someday. It's not going to happen in this playthrough because that would require me to get the characters running first because I would need the person to seduce him. So um, that's uh, it. I just well, I'm going to go the more steady route here. Do 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 do. -do. Boom. Now, you know, first things first, let's do Moreland Shop. Find Moreland Shop. In an ill-lit street at an ill-lit bay or bend at a lesser river, a soft yellow light enters through a grimy window, passes through a grimy window. Mr. Mor Miss, oh, Ms. Moreland, my apologies for misgendering, nods as I enter but doesn't rise. I never ask the names of my clients, she informs me, before I have time to introduce myself. Explorer is unlocked. And we have a location card. The dim premises, Moreland Shop. The dim premises of Ms. Moreland who deals in rare and sometimes dangerous books, and it is a location. Unique can exist once. Okay. Now that's going to be, like I said, our home away from home. This is a location, which this will become more important probably by part four. But right now it's essentially the shops within the city that we have access to. Or the, This is the first one. There will be others. Now this is the exploration. Um, uh, don't know what you want to call box, I guess. Now I found a location. I can explore it. And you find an occult scrap. Occult scrap is a different type of lore. Secret histories are layered beneath the one we know, like knights and rare wine. What? I guess notes is supposed to be like details of flavor. This is a detail from those histories, exploring the scrap of knowledge and uncover secret locations in the capital. Again, requires knowledge, which means we can connect it with that. It has aspect lore, secret history. History is a scar in the world's skin. Now, this is actually important because you're going to realize that not all histories are the same, yet all of them are true. We'll be dealing with the paradoxes later. Uh, but the first thing we want to do, explore the shop. Explore the... F and note what it wants. Money. Because essentially, it takes time to sort the gold from the dross, the wheat from the chaff, the blood from the water. Now, essentially, this is two weeks' pay we're doing on the books. If I buy enough books, I'll find something interesting. All right. Anyways, hit it. So 30 seconds will we have purchased a new book. This is at random. Now there's another location that allows us to know what we're going to buy, but sometimes it can take two or three funds to do so. And since I'm going to be sucking up every book I can in the in this capital that I can purchase before actually looking for lore elsewhere, I really don't care. I'm eventually going to have to buy all of these. Now notice we've got study going nowhere. Now I can study a, something like Smith's Secret, but what I need is to put in another secret to elect. Now, lore uh, combining is something you're going to get familiar with if you do this game. But at the moment, we're just going to zip through. And if... Uh, get back in there. All right, so I don't need to upgrade anything. I can't upgrade anything at the moment. So keep going. Let's see what we find in the stacks. There's health back. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is drop funds in here, so I'll have a, uh, when this turns to dread, I'll have a contentment to uh, deal with it. Yeah, getting drunk. Add to the library, find a book. Gartide, Sanskrit Reader, a lucid book which outlines a careful path through the thickets of a vast and complex language. Text, books of the memory which not die. Yeah, say that to a match, baby. Actions, auctionable. And it can be sold. There is an auction house we'll deal with later. The moment, we've got this. Now, the Sanskrit reader will give us the ability to translate Sanskrit texts. We'll need that later. Improve my Sanskrit. The name has been translated as the refined language. Well, you know, some people. Our little cultures tend to be proud of their accomplishments. But there we go. Another one. Yeah, this is where a lot of our money is going to go. Ms. Moreland's going to get rich off of us. And again, Mr. Alden is being an annoyance. Making this like a PG-13, I get one swear word per episode. Uh, the Burning of the Unburnt God. Now this is when it starts getting interested. Compiled by Hosti Tazmari from oral traditions in rural Persia. And we'll get to that in a moment. But now, as you notice, we start accumulating books. Now I will usually put books down here so I have access to them. And as you can see, let's see. And Contentment. As before... You probably you're gonna be doing this a lot in this game. Is burning off all of these negative conditions until, of course, they uh, get to the back. Now, once we complete the reading, yes, yeah, so I have it on fast forward here, which is not what I recommend when you play this game by yourself until you get really good at it. Okay, bastard. Fifty-seven. I have enough time, so we will be doing another one of these. Yeah, you get a rhythm of this for a while. After a while. 
kind of like Office Space, the movie in which the two jobs you have the, in the film are the office one and a, and a laborer one. And frankly, the guy prefers the laborer one. Less stress. Okay. Now, we have a scholar scrank sans yeah, Sanskrit. Damn it. Oh, there's my one. The holy tongue of the subcontinent. The door to the 4,000 years of poetry ceremony mystery now open lies open before you. If you can struggle through the lotus convolutions of its vocabulary, some books must be translated. And it's a language. Okay, so that one. Usually we'll place the sent the knowledge, the uh, translation cards above here. But right now, we want the burning number god. Now, you're going to notice something. You can just burn through these for the stuff that's inside of them. But you want to know what's really going on in the world? You have to read all of them. Because these are actually the untold histories of this world. Now, study Zasimi's The Burning of the Unburnt God. Kind of a paradox there, but most magic is. Doesn't mean hypothesis or a pre zoroastrian fire deity. Zoroastrian is not a fictional um, deity. It's part of history. There it was a Zoroastrians was a cult, and I don't know. I think Ichi used to quote him. Don't quote me on that. Whose rights are the rights of smiths? Well, obviously we know which lore we're going to be getting out of this. Hit it. Now, uh, we still have enough cash that I'm not concerned about buying another book. Again, we'll be cycling quite a bit through these. Go for it. But I am glad that we got a smith one out, because then I can show you the next part of things. Do -do 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 Alright, so... Yes, all three at once. The Skeleton Songs, poems of greedy delight composed by possibly pseudonymous Arabella Dusk, the rumored heiress turned madam turned poetress. Uh, that's going to be Grail. Grail is the lore of desire, of flesh and of blood and bone. Now, that's different from life energy, which is heart, like this, um, because life is about the sustaining of life and desire is about the transformation of life. If I ever do a Grail run... And you really want to see it? I'll tell you. I'll I'll go deep into that particular lore. But again, back to the back to your first job, and again, buy a book. I'm probably going to slow down purchasing books after a while when I start burning through my cash. I managed to get about six more in between, and I basically ground these cards over and over again, which is something you don't want to see. Um, I uh, managed to get another to accumulate another six funds, but I'm going to burn through those so fast it's ridiculous. All right, keep going. All right, reason is recharged. Now, if you can, you can just hit the C button and ignore everything else and get whatever it is you're going to get out of these books. But I like to look at this and get the idea. Sasme ultimately concludes with apparent reluctance that the deity was a goddess. He suggests that its gender may be the cause of its suppression. The, ear, the rights are sometimes eerie, sometimes grisly. Okay, so... Remember, 1927 London is a patriarchal society. More intensely in some ways, than the current society. So therefore, the concept of there having been a forge goddess, and yes, that's a thing, hell, just look up Bridget on the Irish, in the Irish um, pantheon, would make them uncomfortable, because women are just supposed to be, well, the nice little fertility goddesses you keep in the kitchen. Anyways, now we have a rite. Ooh, this is early in the game to get this. This rite uses an instrument of power to set the blood afire. The fire is a legion in the skin of the world. The assistant rarely survives unharmed. Basically, a rite is how you do magic. Now, we are not set up for that because we require an assistant and other materials. But it is good that you're getting it early. This is not my favorite rite because you don't really want to go around stabbing people for your rites. There are easier ways to do magic. But I suppose if there's somebody I don't like. But an ardent ortisan. Now, this is an actual you note for forge instead of where we have a two when we watch a fire what are we wait watching for when we find it these are the words it will speak the word that sanctifies the change when the seared skin peels again transformation which is one of the aspects now this is how i usually will categorize my lore to have the bottom one be the lowest number and gaps and ups yeah. have it scale upwards in gaps if for example if i was to get a six there'd be a gap between the two so i can know what i'm looking at so in any case Let's take the right. I'll put it over here for now. We're not going to be touching that till probably we get to magic, and I'm probably going to have a better right by then. But if I really wanted to start early, I could. Now, next, we're going with the skeleton songs. In Arabella's introduction, she explains the book was to be illustrated by the Suppression Bureau. Okay, the Suppression Bureau. All right, 1927 London, this is not. Because there's Lovecraftian lore running around, there is, in fact, a police department designed to find and suppress it. 
otherwise known as a suppression bureau. This is, they do not use warrants. They do not uh, have trials. They, if you are suspected of having any problems, you will be disappeared. That is one of the endings for this game is you get disappeared by the suppression bureau if you make too much noise. So most of my runs, I tend not to make noise until I feel like I am so powerful that I don't have to worry about the bureau. This is not at this point. She hints that the illustration still exists somewhere. The book is dedicated to Sir Parcel of the Red Cup, the Red Grail, which is going to be a concept that we come across. But we'll start that one. And another one. Gods. Collection of poetry. Now, this is an interesting one. This one is not going to give you lore. This one, the poet makes himself a seer by an immense, long, deliberate derangement of all the senses, the opposite of wisdom, thankfully. Study to become a, to gain a glimmering lesson learned, which you can use to increase passion. Now, remember, it's going to take you... Looking back at the study on the skill, you have to decide, all right, when you do that, you will need four lesson learns plus the appropriate lore. Here, this one will give you in 60 seconds instead of 180 seconds if you're doing it straight from the passion card. This will give it to you in 60. So if you can grab four of those plus the lore, you can burn through in less than five minutes. You need five minutes, you can get uh, the level four skill. But there are two level four skills for each ability. We'll go into the advantages and disadvantages of those. Meantime, we're just going to store that over here for later use. And yeah, these unending fleeting reminiscences just they'll be useful eventually. But right now, they're just kind of a, they're just kind of coming and going like the moth that, that they represent. OK, and yep, 11 still going to burn through my life savings. All right, so this is, of course, going to be how things go for a while. Now, the question is, of course, how much interesting it's going to be me watching this. I'll probably at some point just skip ahead to when I get to the next stage of things. But Apollo and Marias, the liberato of a lost opera concerning the contest between Apollo and Marias and its tragic outcome. The liberatus is identified only with their initials, RK and JL. That's actually important. There are characters that run through the history, the secret histories that you will find, not the literal secret histories, those two, but also whose stories you'll find in here. Like this particular individual is you're going to find more than once. And if you start paying attention, you begin to figure out where they all fit into the story. OK, so, yeah, we'll bring this down here because we're still waiting on that one and we'll do it again. Now, what I'm probably going to do from this point is I'm going to skip ahead to when I combine lore together because we still haven't gotten enough yet. So when I get to that point, when I get to the point, I'll start recording again. So from this point onward, nothing much is going to change. I'm going to continue this cycle, as you will, until you get to that point. Hang on. OK, so here we are about, I'd say, 20 or 30 minutes down on the timeline. As you can see, I've managed to dig through more just Moreland Shop, mind you. It's the only location I currently have active for quite a bit of lore already. And I still have more to go because at some point you will exhaust all of Moreland stock and they will close. And that opens up an entirely other possibility that is. Well, we'll get to that. In any case, right now, I wanted to stop midpoint of sucking the shop dry to show you that, in fact, what each type of lore is. Now, one thing about the lore is it is literally the frequency of magic, the essence of the divine principles that hold together this world, sort of. Like I said, once you get further down into the lore, you can realize just how disturbed everything is. But in the meantime, let's go over the types of lore. First, you have moth, the power of the wood that enjoys the separation of lock from the scalp. For attention, burn it. For opportunity, bury it. Now, one of the reasons that is so odd when they said that, and if you'll notice, by the way, it's, uh, of course, moth 2, which represents the level of lore here. And it requires intuition. We'll go over that later. And of course, it is lore. So. Right now, like I said, moth represents chaos, dreams, memory, the primordial state of the universe in some degree. And this is, of course, if, if you're using uh, magic, for example, or other forms of concepts, this is the principle you draw upon if you want to use stealth, if you want to use um, confusion, if you want to use sort of untamed dreams. Now, next to it is heart which is the thunderous secret the common sentiments in every thunderclap let us acknowledge them that is the heartbeat it is basically making a metaphor between the heartbeat of a living being and the thunderclap of a world it is the world itself is moving and dynamic and the thunderclap is one manifestation now this is the energy of life itself that motivates and moves and progresses and grows 
And of course, it is one of the ones you want to do for specific types of magic. For example, who could hear this and remained unmoved? The sleeping, the dead, the earth, the sky. And you'll notice, by the way, well, we'll get that in a moment. You will notice, by the way, that I have these things kind of stacked here. Now, what this means is it's an easy way for me when I look at the lore to know what I'm dealing with. Level two on the bottom, level four on the next level, level six, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the no the ranks will go up to 14. Now, with a certain, with a few exceptions, when you come right down to it with lore, there you can get through the game with just getting level six in virtually all of the lore and you'll be able to access to all that you know. Now, the exceptions are winter. We'll get over that in a moment. Um, the, whatever lore you're using to advance yourself in the, um, evolution of your spirit to become a, a higher being, for example, right now that's forge and somewhere I'm using the path of power and of course, secret to histories, which is itself its own kind of convoluted thing, but we'll get to that in a moment. Grail. Grit. Some words are spilled when correctly in paper. Proper ink is used. It's referring to blood, by the way, because the grail, while the heart represents life, the grail represents desire, it represents hunger, it represents death and birth and the continual evolution of life as opposed to its continuation, which is heart. Forge. Excuse me. Okay, the fire in the five continents, smiths have whispered the same words to iron. Murders have been known to whisper these words, and adepts of two. These words are spoken in the ritual to inspire unmerciful change. Now, what forge is, it represents the fire of change. While desire is a form of change in the organic, life itself, so, um, forge is the change of the material. In other words, the burning down of, say, of wood, of iron, ore, of um, coal, and creating a new thing, essentially steel. Well, uh, it's about the refinement and perfection of the self, which is, since I'm currently doing a power um, run, I can change that and I'll show you in a bit, um, is essentially what you're doing to your own soul. Now, Lantern, it expresses this, each color, each house has a color, but color only exists where there's light. Now, in the divine concept, and we're kind of working with a um, Gnostic um, model here, again, Gnosticism keeps coming up in many of my works for Lovecraft, a little weird, but the two zoos seem to work well together. And the Gnosticism believes that all manifestation is through light. In other words, without light within the void, there is nothing, just the primal chaos that represents that moth represents. But in this particular one, one of the reasons I'm bringing up a Gnostic model is it believes that light is inflexible and unchanging as opposed to as dominating and merciless, as opposed to the softer light that you might want to think of in traditional Christian Jito Christianity, which includes the concept of mercy, which does not include it in the world of cultist simulator. Again, we'll go over the differences in that later when we, if we ever get to the lore. Knife. Now, oh, edge is technically what it's called. Sorry about that. When our ancestors forged swords, they taught the arts and martial movements, spoke curses on the eve of battle. All things were shared certain patterns. Now, knife represents violence in two ways. One, edge, if you see, I mean, edge is, sorry, edge represents the both concepts that come number to the. Of course, is violence. That's essentially the ultimate form of setting limits when you destroy a thing through violence to prevent it from going any further. And speaking of which, in the game itself, it more rep you're going to get more of the violence than the edge concept to it. I mean, than the limitations set. Uh, section to it okay winter sexton secrets through certain knowledge it can be expressed only through particular quality of silence it is such that one can only read such knowledge with eyes closed and only by mischievous commentators winter is the principle of silence and endings and the things which are not quite dead in other words it not, not exactly correct because yeah you'll notice those little ones here jealous is blind cannot be wounded there we go there's, um, winter is death. Then effectively in the game it is death energy. It is the, also the one that you do not, you have to get a beyond six if you want to have access to your full amount of magic. It must come to an eight for a certain specific spell requires having eight winter um, power. And the easiest way to do that is through the lore itself, since that's the highest requirement. When we get to magic, we'll do that one. Now here's one you're going to be using a lot of, knock, a locksmith secret. Knock is the bits no seal no isolation. It thrusts out gleefully from the safety of ignorance. Every locksmith has the dream. We were sighted seven phases. Yes. Knock is the ability to open portals. It is the opposite of edge. It is the one that allows us to bridge the two wor bridge worlds and connect and open doors and access. Every summoning 
um, spell requires knock. You are literally opening the doors between worlds and bringing something in. Now, the funny thing is, is that you can actually get through most of the game with only level two knock. It is the weakest combination. Now, the other thing it represents is serpents. Now, this is a little weird because it's an association with chaos that I would have assumed been over here, but it's not. Serpent, dealing with the primordial energies, and this one also represents time, because apparently, if you read the lore, serpents created Nock to escape a timeline in which they were extinct, to come into our timeline, this is of course primordial serpents like dragons, to survive. Again, timelines is something that comes up, and here we, and speaking of which, the secret histories. Secret histories are layered beneath the ones we know, like the notes in a rare wine. This is a detail from one of those histories, but a secret history is a scar in the world's skin. Now that, I've told you that the concept of multiple timelines, but the thing is, they bleed. Some secret history shows you a point where there's a bleed through from another form of reality. And then when you research it, you can find a spot to try to access more occult knowledge. This is going to be probably stage four, what I call road trip, when you start dealing with going to places. But right now, we're just dealing with lore. And I just wanted to say, I just wanted to point out the basic concepts if you're dealing with. Now, one of the first things you're going to have to learn how to do is to combine, is to grow lore. So essentially, you'll notice a bunch of these have two, which means you have the same type of concept of lore than we do um, at, with the same level. But of course, we want to advance that. I've noticed, I told you, you need to get about to level six. Now, one of the, the thing is, is that some people, if you're not really paying attention to what you're doing, it can be kind of, kind of odd to do this because there are specific challenges that are required when you do, uh, that you will need to have um, a card or an asset or a location even to be able to pass. If those challenges are all met, you can combine the lore. If not, you fail and you've wasted your time. Now, this the thing is, it's not really mysterious. It's literally listed right here. Aspect requires knowledge. This is a puzzle of missing pieces. To find these pieces in odd corners of scholar, I must find these pieces in odd scholar corners of scholarship. Ah, brain, start working. Apparently the coffee is not hit. To upgrade or subvert this fragment, you need erudition or an HQ with a library. Now, HQ is headquarters. We'll get into that later when we get to cults. But erudition, something we're terribly familiar with. So if you want to combine these two fragments to make level two fragments to make a four one, we're going to need erudition. This, of course, is the easiest way of doing it, but it's not the quickest. We is a workaround that lets you burn through these uh, things faster so you don't have to have all the cards in play when you're doing so. Now, as you notice in the moment, I've managed to collect three poetry and three um, three poetry and three essays, the ones that produce erudition, one, um, lesson learned or uh, passion lesson learned, and there's a reason for that. Also, we need to get back to our job before we get fired and take a nap to deal with the fact that we just came off our second job as a, as a street laborer. And currently, we usually I don't like to uh, hit the bookstore until I have at least six, because that's also counting the one that's being burned at the moment. So yeah, we're just chugging against the clock. Oh yeah, you also notice that in my time going through more ones, I've managed to teach myself Sanskrit, Greek, and Latin, so I can go through more obscure books, which, you know, as you do, you can't really do the Necronomicon, and unless you can do the Necronomicon in the original Arabic, you're just not getting the full extent. All right, let's move. Okay, so the erudition normally is going to take 60 seconds of game time. We're on fast forward, which means it's probably moving at double speed. You know, so I'll have to be dealing with other things as well, like the sickness down here. So do forgive when I, uh, ugh, messy, messy. Do forgive if I start uh, moving in multiple directions. You kind of have a requirement for this game. So we've got that. We're going to leave this blank so I have the vitality ready when this thing goes. The second vitality, that will be decayed by then. And we'll see if we are forced to do unpaid overtime again. Rare. Boom. Get rid of the affliction. Always have to keep track of these things. You'll notice the fascination trap is up, so I do not want to activate fascination, and that actually is a possibility when you combine lore or read a books. Oh, there goes my money. Because life is not cheap. Okay. There, we are required to do the extra time, but you notice we've got the erudition. Now, with the erudition in play, it's going to pass for 180 seconds. You have to keep that in mind, because combining lore takes a lot of time. Study the lore which burns. Very few know that smiths and murderers speak the same prayers. I will examine those prayers, of course, because you want the strength of the blade to be uh, to work with you. You notice I have two require knowledge. Remember, four, fire is warm, that warms and consumes, and lore. So in other words, it's keeping track of all the cards I put into one play. There. Now, here's the thing. 
I don't know why they did this, but there's actually a minute before you even get to the first test in which it's kind of uh, just sitting there. It slows you down. There's no way around it, but I just... For game purposes, it seems unnecessary. Because it's the same damn thing, no matter what you do. Into the Night. Wisdom is a country, and there are many maps. Solve all the challenges to from both fragments of lore to complete the research task. You can return to the task later if you fail. You'll notice that is I have increasing my knowledge, which was my desire, plus the two smith secrets. Okay. Listed here. And again, let's see. 57 seconds. We'll do our second job. So we have a vitality running in case of illness again, or injury, or whatever the hell that throws at us. In some cases, you can actually wound yourself doing a research or lose mat or lose a uh, reason and passion. So you have to be careful. Oops, that goes there. The health is returned. I now have the uh, now have the law looking through my things, but I haven't done anything illegal, so it will pass me by. All right. So first challenge, and it already is noted. Challenge knowledge. A puzzle with missing pieces. I can find those pieces in odd forms of scholarship, which we have erudition. There we go. Boom. Okay, take the job, tality, and let's see, throw in your first job. Oh yeah, he hasn't retired yet. And take a nap. Terribly exciting, this phase. I'm content that I have not broken the law. I'm sleeping well. Alright, what do we got here? Aha, there it is. You have pa received, you have a resolved the knowledge chance. Yeah, it just goes on and on for some reason. It's kind of an artificial limit from my point of view. Ah, there we go. There's another depression. Another uh, future dread issue since I'm not going to be using the usual method of doing so if I want to keep my job. Now, if you can advance this job once you get Pat, Mr. Alden to the point where it takes a 90 second loop, which means that you can take the job. You can do something else like dealing with the dealing with the um, restlessness or um, using magic or, you know, if you want it to do do this again and you can still make three, you can still make enough money to keep going game going and eventually you'll be able to quit the job entirely if you've got yourself set up properly. Not that blinking the light. Ah, now I understand. This means that you've passed all the challenges and when it's done, it will show you what your results are. And there we are over time again. Hate you. Mm. All right, so now we have ardent orison, an ardent orison. I gotta look at the word. We watch a fire. What are we watching for? When we find it, there's the words it will speak. A word that sanctifies the change that comes when the seared skin peels. Yeah, and you notice we now have four, and I can do this again and get a level six, which I told you before is kind of where you want to be to be fully functional. So we'll run this one again. Uh, but hey, didn't I make a mistake? No erudition. That's right. And if you don't have erudition, I'm going to show you what failure looks like. Like I said, there is a way to do it without the erudition. 57 seconds, so let's keep the vitality rolling. And luckily, I think if we can get a contentment out of this, we can burn off that depression coming up. Boom. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to show you what failure looks like. There you go. Study the lore which burns into the night again. Give me a contentment, please. Boom, got it. So we'll uh, shake off our dread by realizing that the law is not trying to kill us. They don't actually kill you, they put you in prison. Now notice I'm gonna fail this one. I wanna show you the full experience, of course. You will, see, you will experience failure multiple times on this game, of course. It's just gonna keep hitting you again. The question is how quickly you recover. All right, so. Ta da No, I actually want to say I planned that, by the way, but I really didn't. I just, the thing is, is that I was so bored, I started combining the extra addition and vitality I was making into these lesson learned things. And the reason you do that is just the reason I did it, is because sometimes you'll get those moments to come back. There's no reason to waste it. If your study isn't doing anything, you might as well just save stuff up, store it like you were canning preserves, you know? Here, I'll show you when we get through this one. Okay, health's back. All right, another contentment. Hey, look, I got no problem with that. It's looking for essentially a lover. You can get a lover in this game. And however, sometimes, as is pointed out, keeping a personal relationship with both a mortal being and dark forces of the universe can be tricky. Complicates everything. But yeah, we've now reached level six. 
The proper words must be employed when the change comes. Use in a right with knock influence and a bone flute or other resources of equal value to summon a Kaling, which is a type of spirit. Now you notice that we have two challenges. If we want to go beyond level six, we have to pass two challenges, which is practical experimentation. Pain is only what happens now, and knowledge is what we will remember. To upgrade or subvert this fragment, you'll need to risk your health or use a prisoner. Basically, you need to do some experimentation with knives and fire. And yeah, that can hurt you, but hey, if you've got somebody that you know is in a cage, you can experiment on them cheerfully and produce a corpse. We are not to that level of psychosis at this point, so odds are we'll just be into self-mutilation. Yeah, that's worth self-mutilation being the more moral opportunity yeah it can get kind of messy sometimes all right so what are we gonna do next yeah now you notice that i'm gonna probably from this point forward oh yeah he forgot managed to make enough money so we can probably get by here because i'll be getting the two from here you gotta plan this out because for example this seven is referring also to the two i'm about to get in 6.5 seconds so you cannot entire rely on this bar down here but yeah all right go for it <laughs> There we go, we got the money back. Reason is dimmed, having to deal with this idiot. And of course we do this. Now, again, I'll primarily be doing what I've shown before, so here's where things will skip forward again. I'll get to the point where essentially I'm probably gonna be sucking the bookstore dry, and then we'll move on to the next part. Maybe then, catch you there. Speak of the devil and it will rise. Yeah, the event that I was referring to has occurred. Moreland is closing. I'm moving out, Ms. Moreland informs you. My stock is largely exhausted. You've bought everything. And Suppression Bureau are taking interest, so it's goodbye. This last book is nonsense, but I've tucked some interesting papers into the back as a thanks for your custom. Well, we spent... You want to count it up? Uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, we spent over, we spent a year's salary in this place, if you count it up, before it closes. And it's embarrassing if you try, even if you're doing a menial job, a clerk job, that's a lot of cash. But yeah, now we have the closed. Now, what's interesting, the card remains. This used to be the address of Mo Moreland's, the book dealer, but I have to look elsewhere for knowledge now. It's strange that they keep the card here. It could almost mean that it might have an additional purpose. Hint, hint. Anyways, this, Arden Orderson is a level four piece of lore, if I'm correct. So yeah, it's not super useful now since I've already moved up to six. And there is this. Something, something, deep mystery, something. A dreadful souffle of half-digested rumor about the secret worlds and the irrelevance of contemporary morality, including a uh, catalog of unlikely and probably invented debaucheries. Oh God, don't tell me we've got uh, Crowley in this universe, because that's honestly what it sounds like. Yeah, you can have a little, this is useless. You can't study it. If you try it, the game just kind of laughs at you. But it's absolute nonsense. It's the sort of stuff you see in um, occult books that is put out uh, by put out on the cheap and by and uh, that. So now we have to ask ourselves what we're going to do to get our knowledge. I'll continue to upgrade these, of course, and they'll move upwards, but they'll stop eventually, primarily at the sixth level. But that's when we have to introduce the next location. Now, if you recall, in order to search the city, you have to basically take a jog. You'll be consuming that health to do so. Uh, do, 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 do. All right. And that's what I wanted. Okay, first of all, let's introduce ourselves to the new location. Hey, don't do that. I didn't ask you to do that. Oriflam's Auction House. Oriflam specializes in curios, perfumes, taxidermy specimens, and rare texts. It operates from cramped new premises now since the destruction of the old and unexplained fire. You can buy or sell items. Now, here's how you do it. All right, you perch in an alarming array of old chairs in a windowless auction room with vividly burnt orange walls, which means they're forage aligned. Pay attention to colors. That's important in the lore. Waiting for the auctioneer to announce what he's offering. The brain of the reek of new paint makes the brain burn. Hit start to see what's on offer. Add an item you'd like to sell. This is useless. This oddity is worth something, but we might be able to uh, pawn it off on somebody else. Access text, yes. Okay. Go. So that's how you sell. Now, never sell anything you really need. And... Wow, this is part of one of my mo one of my uh, basic strategies is to use the auction house to help support ourselves. We're not ready to do that now. I'll show you when we get to next part, uh, bringing the band back together. That um, what happened? How that works? All right, got rid of the dread. Throw the uh, health in here to have that. We're gonna get a new dread. Screw you all. All right, so what do we got here? Oh yeah. And we've got the Eridution. I've been uh, slowly but surely 
Uh, let's see. Okay, Erudition. Yep, let's do Light. Let's do Lantern next and bring that up. That, of course, since it's the um, magic of consciousness and light, will, of course, require a knowledge test. Uh, do, 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 do. And as you can see, Murmurings, for whatever reason, likely uses my item has caught the fancy of the bidders. Oh, it's kind of surprising. Apparently, don't know what they're bidding for. One of the cards when you do the bidding, by the way, informs them that most people who buy this shit have no idea what it is. It just looks shiny and they want it on their shelf. Even if it is, you know, some, an artifact that can summon the destruction of the world. And into the night. Another contentment, please. Give me another contentment. Mama needs another contentment. All right. So, yeah. We got two bucks out of it, which, you know, is more than I was hoping for. Uh, the thing is, you can actually get zero if you're not, if you're really unlucky. Okay, work. Another two here. And as a result, what, no, put that back. Put your turn now. Since I have about nine here, I'm going to feel safe to do a bidding because you can take bidding allows you to buy additional items. But if you don't have enough money and it passes you by, that item is gone for good. And there's one item from Aura Flames you must, must get to, or it makes the game twice as difficult. And if we get to it, I'll show it to you. But for the moment, we're going to hit start as it indicates to tell us what exactly is for sale. All right. Boom. Now. In order to tell us for sale, a crowd of pinched faces, glinting in eyes, who will bid? The item at the auction is visible on the right. It'll be gone here. It's a collection of poetry. Now, I'm not going to purchase this because I already have three, and that's probably more than enough I need for the next level of self-improvement. Of course, these are the books are useful for the last level of improvement because it can be dreadfully long to take a, to try to get it together. So, I'm going to let this one go. I don't need it. All right, knowledge test. There we go. Give me contentment, and we do have it. Oh, I've been so lucky with this so far. Whatever gods of fortune are smiling, I thank you. All right, so, as you can see, now I have four plates spinning at the same time. You've got to keep track of this. It says the auction is over, and that bidding is, uh, I have lost. So, let's do it again. Let's see what else we can get. There are a few books you'll get from here. Again, you have to pause it at this point. Bid is, this is it, stum. A can of nitrate filled named Stum, silent or perhaps mute. That's what the name of the thing. Silence. Aha! Do we know a magical principle that relies in silence? The director's name, Jarek Kossi, is shakily appended. JK, if you remember, is also initial part of the initials that we had in a previous work. Do we need this one? I do not care how much you have to spend and how much debt you get into. You purchase Stum. I raise my hand. The action erupts in knowledge. Will anyone match me? Because yes, somebody can try to bid against you. All right. Money, more money. More money. Yeah, money makes the mundane world go around. Let's see. Boom. Back to work. First job. While wow, simultaneously studying the, the arcane arts and... Alright, somebody has bid against me. They've matched, which is why you have to have these funds available. In order to be able to do so, you have to be able to outbid this guy. And I don't think I've ever, except one rare exception in the Apostle, in an Apostle run, you probably don't need any more than three. Okay, we, the health's going to regen on its own. We don't have a problem there. This will decay because I don't have any dread going into a fleeting remembrance. These actually will come useful later. I'll show you. Stum is actually, oh my god, we're at three. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? I could have lost this if I didn't have enough. Okay, so yeah, there's two there. Note, only you still need a knowledge test. So what we do is we toss in the reason for the Erudition to bring it to level six. All right. Now working. Working the job. Did I actually... All right, so we have the money to actually do this. Yep, we're going to have time. Throw the health in. Yeah, you can see how quickly details can get out of your control. And we're not even running on all cylinders at the moment. Okay, so three. Please don't prove me wrong and say I have to go to four to get this damn thing. It's probably random, but I'm hoping there's a maximum ceiling. There, three again. The actor makes a note of my name and signals one of the attendants. I have my prize. I hope it's worth it. Stum. Oh, you're going to like this. Okay, first things first. Once we get done with this particular thing, I'll show you what Stum is. And it's kind of one of the nicer pieces of lore. Unlike every other piece of arcane lore, this is a film, which means it's in... Um, Remember, it's 1927. The film is a cutting-edge um, technology. Um, this is going to be kind of the transmission of occult lore, the uh, interpretation, visual interpretation. Remember, occult lores are mimetic structures. You can, they can be in anything. When a game in Secret Worlds, for example, you can have corruptive lore sprayed like graffiti onto the wall. If you read it, your mind becomes corrupted. 
Just something to make you a little more paranoid. Anyways, uh, if necessary, since I've got this thing going right now, hmm, got to decide. Well, I can get Eridush anytime, and I don't want you guys having to hang out here for too long. So, at the usual. Ugh, God, grinding the job. It's like too much like real world. All right. So, Eridushin, I don't know if it's going to last long enough, but they are stum. All right. Why do we do that? Because we need to purchase a projector. Remember, this is 1927. There's, these projectors are not something you're going to be, have hang around the house. And like we have all VCRs in the 1970s and 80s, or, you know, of course, DVD, C, it's CDs, DVDs, and streaming these days. Watch Stum. The film rattles through the projector, grows silent, glows silently on the wall. It's a story of a foolish student of forbidden sciences who recruits a dancer to entice the dead back into the world through a flaw in its skin. Knock. It's a fiction, but here in the title card is the Operation The Declining Sun, which is a name of a which is a name of one of the uh, winter lores. So let's watch it. I'm sure it'll be I'm sure it'll be fun. Okay, we got that back. Now, oh yeah, hold on. Not quite. I think I'll check to only change after we do so. All right, tent minute gonna go to waste. You go here. All right, another two funds. He's doing that less, which I find, which I appreciate. Probably just random though. Anyways, let's get the vitality going again. Always making sure that I have enough time to do this without losing the job. Necessary, I'll skip it. All right, here we go. Now, you'll notice something had just happened. Watching the film gave us dread, and even though we didn't open it, the magnet pulled dread into here, which means I'm gonna have trouble, which means I gotta go get drunk after watching this film. That bad, huh? Anyways, let's go. Not that it's bad, it's spooky. The right is depicting in chilling detail. Here is the flaw in the world, an influence simmering on the luminous paint. Here is the dancer establishing an irresistible rhythm. Here is a scholar recites the operation, and now the misty dead whirls through the flaw to consume him. The film closes on the dancer's watchful eyes. Had she intended it all from the start, I would watch the fuck out of this short film. I do love the Lovecraftian Film Festival, which unfortunately due to, you know, an unmanaged plague in my country, I'm not going to be able to go to this year. Well, I'll spend the money on games, I guess, but still, it's not quite the same. They're doing some online stuff, but I'm just not feeling it, you know what I mean? I went there kind of for the energy, and you just don't get that by passively watching at the home. Anyways, Operation of the Declining Sun is a level 6, but like I noticed before, we actually want to upgrade Winter to a, um, a higher, to 8. And this is the one that we wanted, the Sunset Right. Now, I've already gotten two rights before. The assistant must cry tears of genuine emotion, which are spurged in the place where the influence lies. If all is done well, the sun in rags will consume the influence, acknowledge the ending, and lend its assistance. All right. There is a lovely Doctor Who episode called um, Heaven Sent, and if you haven't seen it, see it. I don't care if you don't watch Doctor Who. It's a standalone story, and it is beautiful and magnificent in its um, depiction of the cycles of what that the cycles of well. Just say it's a wonderful gothic influence on the nature of uh, death and rebirth. In any case, one of the concepts they had in it, the doctor says, is that if you need power, it's easy to get. You just have need something to burn. Now, what the thing is, is that what this is saying is when it's consumed, whenever we have a right and we use it, there were the others, something must be consumed. In Sunset Right, it is... Um, it is... Um, an influence, which is pretty cheap. You notice how quickly some of these influences go by and how how common they are. In the right of the uh, Crucible Soul, it's a person. Now, that may sound illogical because even if you're the psychotic sort, every one of your cultists you sacrifice, you're not going to get back. But there is a reason to do it later on in the game. Again, I'll show you. And the right of Watchman Sorrow is you burn lore. Now, this is stupid because lore is precious. Now, I may not need to get over level six in all of these, but I don't want to ever be short of this. So, th and considering you can use Sunset Right to get virtually anything you want to, you're going to be using this one 90% of the time, which is why it's so important to get first. And when we clear the current problem and current job, because remember, work is what rights do as well, which is one of the problems of trying to balance a job and the arcane arts, is you can get fired. And I mean, you have to clean off the lamb's blood before you get back to a, the job, or they just ask too many freaking questions. Uh, yeah, the erudition's not going to last long enough, so while we're doing this, I'll reboot it. All right. Get the usual. Get the extra vitality. 
Take a nap. Sunset right. Okay, you'll notice that rights require three things. They, the fourth one is desire. That's when you max out your desire. You put it here, and the right will push you out of this world and into your next form. You're a long way from that right now. Invocation, you notice, remember, press the button. It tells you what you want to have. Invocation is, of course, lore. What are the words? The spell. The assistant. We don't have an assistant yet. Now, assistants, of course, when we get the next phase, we'll be getting your cult together to have to get these assistants, getting the band back together, as I put it. Offering. Offering, of course, is... Influence. You have two, we have these right here. One influence heart, one influence uh, um, lantern. This one's two influence a lantern and two influence a heart. And you're going to have a lot more powerful ones once you start dreaming. And that's probably what we're going to tackle next. Dreams. Now, remember back when I tried to dream with passion? Oh, hang on. I gotta go back to work. Okay. When a, and it kind of looking for a card and couldn't find it. Well, you needed to put in arcane lore. The question is, what kind of arcane lore? Ugh got the sniffles again all right so we're gonna have to ignore that for now we're gonna have vitality for days when we come out but let's talk about accessing the dream world the moonlit road a road leads to a loot top now what it wants is lore the question is what kind of lore does it want so let's think about this for a second do we want dreams and chaos is that it yep i could cut a lock of hair to honor the power of the wood is that it does it want the power of life nope does it want the power of desire nope how about the power of forge? Nope, not working. How about the power of light? Ah, the bleached way. I could sleep in a room without colors, bleach the wall, wash my skin, and dye it to the hair and paint my skin. It sounds painful. Knife? Nope. However, you should have probably, if you're just playing this game and painting the lore, yeah. The most obvious one, boom, the serpent's way. Locksmiths have often have dreams about the soul of the foot is wounded, especially if it's been snake bitten. I could rather basically you stab your foot. So between all of this, taking off your hair, stabbing your foot, or bleaching your skin in your room, screw this. I'm definitely just going to take the damn hair. Seems less painful. <laughs> so let's go check out what the dream world looks like. Alright, Erudition, keep this going. Want to get this lore up to six. Boom, we'll deal with it later. Money, let's see. Go to our other go to our second job. Yeah. Gonna look forward to getting rid of employment of the employment necessities. So let's see if it works. Sick. God, I got both traps going. Boom. Thurston Way. The doe ducks into the trees. Pale wings move deep in the forest. I am stumbling over roots now. It is tempting to drop to all fours to avoid the low branches. The moon passes behind the black leaves. Through her fingers remain the hair. I will not forget the way to this place. We have opened the door. Buzzing the brain. That is another influence. I'm not going to snay this. Second order influence. Second orders are the weakest. That's a two moth influence. This can be used in some rights to summon minions. Again, since we don't have... We don't have the things necessary to summon beings here at the moment, so we're just going to have to skip for the moment. Boom, another one of these. Okay, now way the woods. I've learned the path of the wood, the tangled darkness that grows along the walls of the mansis. And the mansis has no walls. I can dream this return to the woods. The wood is the most basic, lowest form of the dream realm in which it is possible to go. Now, as much as I would love hit the dream realm right now, we got to do this. It's always a problem. Always a problem. Boom. All right. Do, 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 do. Yeah, here we go. Oh, and I told you before, sometimes you, you will spit out these extra things here. Yeah, that's going to be restlessness. This one's going to be vitality. That will create new influence cards just because of what you're doing. Now, note that Erudition is the rarest one that you're going to get split off. That's a lantern symbol. Oh my god, I screwed up. Yep, you're going to find out. Plead to find my job, to get my job back. This is not a pleasant conversation necessary. I'm going to beg Mr. Alden. We were late for work not to fire us. And there's the restlessness again. All right. Now we have our vitality and our things back, influence back. And once we get over our sniffles... Oh, yeah, there we go. We will access the, We will access the dream realm. Dream. If I have enough passion, I can walk the dream realm to the wood. If I have enough knowledge, right, knowledge I'll be able to find a way beyond it. Oh, 
Is there a way to get beyond it? Now, the, we're going to do the wood one first, but then we're going to try to see what we can do to access the next part. Employ passion into the wood or the right lore. Find the way to the white door, the door of the dead throng. Huh. wonder if it's that one. But, I mean, first, let's go. Entering the wood. Now I pass between the scar bark trees. The moon passes the branches. Here, here hang on. Though it's fingers... Hey. This fingers um, remain in my hair. I am stumbling over roots now. It's tempting to drop to all fours. Pale wings move deep in the white. That's moth. It's because you're dealing... We we'll see why moth is there. Oh my god, I got two dread going. Oh, this is bad. You know what? I'm going to have to beg again because I cannot function with this. Okay, as we're... Yeah, this is definitely a passion thing. Let's deal with the way of how you get rid of dread. Okay. Paint. I used to paint. You could paint this sites I half remember from my dreams. I might sell something. I probably won't. This has been a passion heavy episode. So yeah, we're going to take this and this is the only card you can have. You notice I had, did this through experimentation. I actually remembered to do that at one point where I had restlessness going. And yes, you can transmute your restlessness into paint or I suppose call sculpture or some other form. Painting is kind of the default here. I like to imagine you could be sculpture or architecture or uh, writing. Something that, something to transmute the unformed energies of uh, creation into something tangible. Help break away. Oh my god, you're just dumping restlessness on me. And there we go, level 6 lore. Next one we want is this, and it's telling us that we need knowledge. So again, another erudition to bring up winter. We need to get that to 8, if you recall. There we go, the dream realm. Now... Each one of these represents a door into the dream realm. We have access to the wood, which obviously is the wood here. But the thing is, it's not really wood. The dream realm, we see what we can with the representation. As you can see, these beings here, we'll, we'll meet them later. This is the edge of chaos. The mansus and the glory, the light above it, here, represents the light of order and reason. The chaos is what is around the edges of order and reason. So we see this as a forest, but beyond the forest is the primal chaos, the dark realm of which um, mysteries and story tales and you know lovecraftian horror um abide so we want to get closer to the light the whole point of this game is to try to access the glory of the light and have it transmute us but as you can see we start at the bottom the first door of the wood now here's the deal it's always kind of a three card mounty when you do this you'll note that you can go to two places the temple the wheel or the well to look for things or you can stop by the gate of the wood and take this now this card peculiar rumor this might lead me to someone i need or it might lead something else entirely explore the rumor to follow up on it the biggest problem with that if you explore with a rumor you will end up um attracting notoriety which is not something we're dealing with quite yet so we're gonna just take one of these cards all right so as you can see it destroys the other two cards but we managed to get a fruit of truth a level four ah there we go a level four, um, secret, secret histories lore. The velvet is strong at the well in the wood. Uh, get back here. And the velvet is the hour keeps secrets, and now and then she keeps lets a little secret fall, like a crumb. Velvet is night, by the way. At the feast, it's basically chaos, a little bit of light to it. Last night I found a moss-clad rock written all around it with the secrets of another history. Another history, another timeline, another overlap in our world. I might give thanks to the velvet, but I will not be wiser not to draw her attention. But the night hunts. Anyway, so yes, now we have access to the wood. So, we also noticed the furtive lore slipped over here. The dread goes here. I need to get drunk again because I have way too much of this um, dread coming up. All right, so next. While we're waiting for things to uh, improve, as it were. Okay, here we go. The painting. I finished a painting to the excitement of absolute no one. No one but me. Sometimes Xenia will give you glimmering study and then to unlock more advanced painting options. Now, here's the deal. I've already unlocked them with this. I could at any time simply access this and put in passion or mystique cards. This will generate however mystique, which is not a thing I want to do at the moment. We're still trying to get the contentment cards from having absolutely no police attention to our lives. So passion's really been stretched thin of late. So now we have to, there we go. We can get back to work because, oh, thank God. And oh, junior work. Oh my God. Oh shit. I didn't even notice Alden retired. We're not dealing with this crap anymore. We're going to get a... With him gone, we're going to get a damned... Uh, good, oh, wait. No, no. No, Alden's still here. I forgot. We got demoted. We're going to be back under Alden's graces shortly. Oh, my God. I thought he'd retire, but oh, no. You can't get that lucky. Little bastard. almost wish I could kill you at this point. All right. So, contentment back so we can get rid of the dread. Cause get, and we have future dread coming. Okay. Breathe, breathe. Okay. 
five. It's less money than I like, because we've had to take time off for heart therapy. Oh, it's gonna happen again anyways. I hate you all. We're gonna get so trashed trying to get this going. If this gets really bad, I am just going to uh, skip ahead, because there's no reason you need to see me um, fail. So, I've managed to stabilize things slightly. So, one of the things you notice about Way to the Wood is that we have the ability to act, try to find the next stage, which is the White Door. I'm going to guess that Winter will get us the Door of the Dead. Boom. What are the odds of that? There's a house in the wood and the door which the dead sometimes go. I have yet read of the path of the Dead Lake. Now, let's see if there's anything else we could throw in. Light. Light would do it, too. I um, Enough to find my way to the light. Uh, white tends to be pretty universal about that. Chaos won't do it. Heart obviously won't. And Forge? I think you need a level 6. Yeah. So basically, yeah. The one the correct one to pick is usually going to be Light or whatever specific to the door. In that case, of course, Death. Ugh, goddamn restlessness. Oh, what are we doing with it? Here you need... Tuition, so you need a Glimmering. Will last long enough. So let's hit it. Yeah, I'm just going to try to do as much parallel work as possible. Take the jaw. Good. Screw you, old man. Go. So let's see what we can find behind door number two. Ah, more contentment. Most should be useful. It's dreads about to hit now. All right. Okay, there are bounds. Ooh, stop it. There are bounds about the house and the mists in their traces. This is its rock called the Temple of the Wheel. High as a church spire patched with black lichen and daubed with eye signs. I round it, and there ahead of me is the white door, a glow by winter. All right, so now we have door number two, which is the white door. If you want to access the white door? Well, hang on. I hate to do this to you guys, but I got to get rid of this uh, um, dread. It's been piling up like crazy. This is the third one in two minutes, in the three minutes. All right, so we'll just zip past this. Anyways, and boom, vitality. Yeah, if it gets really egregious, I will skip ahead again. But for the moment, let's just continue the grind. And glimmering goes to the moth being joined together. This is a challenge intuition. You require glimmering or HQ with a sanctuary, I believe. Yep. We don't have an HQ yet, so it's glimmering. Most basic version. Now, I did say there were books in the auction house, but I'm still saving up money because you saw how quickly you can lose something that's critical. Okay, so... And boom. All right. Being our resistance, you're going to give me another contentment. Hopefully. Okay, so let's hit the door number two, the dead peoples. In my dream, I know the path of the white door through the bounds. The path is thronged with the dead. They require I will need health to resist their cries. Basically, it sucks a section of your life force out. Now I can approach the bright door through the bounds. It is, I press my fingers to it, feel its chill, watch it swing open. As it opens, my mouth closes, tightens, and heals over like a lost deformity. About me are the cobalt mountain, cobalt, dark blue, light of the mansus. We've reached the lowest point of the mansus. When you wake up, you get your vocalizations back. Uh, you suck, old man. All right, all right. Ah, now you understand it. Yeah, juggling everything. Oh, good. We've almost got to the point where I feel safe going to the auction house. All right, so you've got 57 seconds left. Let's get the vitality back. All right, health stretching a bit thin. All right, Lord of the Woods. I've increased my mysteries of the wood. We have the wood whispers. So once again, what we want is a glimmering to bring that one up. Yeah, I think this episode's running a little long. I do apologize. Once we get through the gate, there we go. We'll go with that. Restlessness. I obviously don't want to get that at the white door. Um, this, I don't know why I'd want it. But yeah, the Lodge of the Sage Knight is a, and the Orchard of Lights. The Orchard of Lights has a fruit, a fruit of light, which is descended from the glory, while the Lodge of the Sage King is a temporary sanctuary point established on those heading up the way of the glory by the Sage Knight, who I think has long departed. Favor from authority. All right. 
this is something that's important if you ever manage to get damning evidence on you, but for the moment it's kind of useless. Last night I dreamed of the blue silk pavilion overlooking the cloudy labyrinth of the bounds. I listened to the mistress of the place speak of other visitors. The suppression brio came here, did you know? They think I hope to recruit me as an ally. There's a bit of scrap lore there. The suppression bureau, which is there to maintain that their magic is terrible is of course magical themselves hypocrites they want all the power for themselves so i'm going to feel really really not so bad if we get to the point where i show you my f the police strategy of dealing with them i think after what they did to christopher i think he's in he was taken away failed to attempt to transcend but their folly is your fortune i will tell you something that may help you if the bureau ever troubles you yep this allows you if you've learned something, allow me a favor once only. So preserve your fo you or a follower from imprisonment, but it cannot be relied upon. So it gives you like a chance of avoiding imprisonment if you ever get that low in the end thing. So again, this is probably where I'm going to a little off. Uh, from this point forward, I'm just going to suck the remaining books out of the auction house, and then I will combine a lore to max out to the point where I can stop. Now, I will not be maxing these out because when we get to the road trip um, part of this uh, scenario, you'll find out what these are in fact used for. So in any case, this is Fantastic World saying farewell from Lovecraft Country and tips and tricks um, of the Cultist Simulator game. Again, there's multiple ways to play this game. I'm just trying to right now give you, a, if you are a beginner, to give you a concept of how you can win the game if you're patient enough without being stupid risk. Because you notice I don't have any police um, with presence right now, nor do I have angry spirits or rivals attempting to take me out. I'm nobody at this time. And in a cult, um, and Lovecraftian cult, that's important. You want to go below the road air. You don't want to have those annoying investigators hunting you down or being in debt to forces beyond your comprehension that will consume your soul, which, of course, is part of the risk of being a cultist. Anyways, so if you like this, like, share, subscribe. If you really like it, down below, there are links to the Gumroad payment platform. Um, I'm actually considering, if there is any interest in this, is that doing a... Um, uh, live stream twitch style maybe youtube it depends on which uh, which one works out better for me of this game and other sorts of lovecraftian games that are less narrative which would be appropriate for my uh, regular episodes and more interactive and fun to have chat watch me and try to uh, do try to uh, either beat this game or some other thing i mean i am an XCOM freak but it's not exactly fitting into the lovecraftian thing but if that's interest of you just let me know in the comments below in any case i will see you next time